I'm going to share with you the eight best inexpensive house plants to start your collection this year. These plants are tough to kill and will help you on the road to become an expert plant parent. Hey, Lee here, and I have a very diverse group of house plants that will help you start your collection, learn the ropes of house plant care, and you can do all that without breaking the bank. I would argue that the most important skill that any plant parent needs to know is consistency. And the best plant to teach you consistency is the golden pothos. If you're looking for a highly variegated plant on the cheap, then the golden pothos is probably for you. There are lots of other pothos varieties as well, like the neon pothos, the marble queen pothos, pearl and jade pothos, but the golden pothos is definitely one of my favorites. The lighting with this plant is very simple. Try to keep it out of direct sunlight, but this plant does really well in places where it can get extremely bright and indirect light. This plant can get away with living in low light, but it will survive and it will not thrive in low light. So if you want this plant to grow, make sure you're giving it as much light as you can without direct sunlight. This is a vining plant, so you do have lots of different options for how you want to grow this plant. If you want to put a stake or a moss pole in its pot and have the plant climb up, you can have much larger leaves. If you want to put it on a shelf and have it grow down, you can have it as an amazing hanging plant or you can even keep it as a table plant. Just put it on a table, keep making those cuts to keep it small. The watering schedule with this plant can be extremely forgiving. It can go through periods of drought, can also handle a little bit of overwatering. I have this plant on a one week watering schedule, but the best thing for you to do is just to remain consistent. Keep an eye on your plant. If you see it start to droop, it's probably time to water. You can also stick your finger in the first few inches of the soil. And if you feel that it's dry, then it's time to water your plant. I really like the arrow shaped leaves on this plant. I think if you're looking for one from the store, you should try to find one with as much mixed variegation as you can. Try to find an even balance between the yellow and green variegation. This plant can revert back to its original green color, so make sure you take your time and try to find the plant that best suits your style. These plants are so easy to care for, so easy to propagate. They're available almost anywhere and you can get them for a really affordable price in tons of different sizes. Stay consistent with this plant and all your house plants to learn how to become a better plant parent. The next thing new plant parents need to understand is direct light. Which windows and which times of the day are giving you that most intense direct light? And the plant to help you figure that out is the jade plant. The jade plant was my first succulent and it's extremely easy to care for. If you're living in the northern hemisphere, a south facing window is probably the best place for this plant. They need lots of hours of direct sunlight every day. You can tell that your jade plant is doing well if you start to see that red sun stress around the edges of the leaves. One of the cool things about this plant is that as it grows older, the stem grows thicker and it starts to turn into a wood-like structure. When the plant is young, the stem is green and it's really interesting to watch it change slowly over time. Because this plant is a succulent, it doesn't require watering that frequently. I water mine about once a month and it stores a lot of that water in its leaves. So feel the leaves. If they're firm, it doesn't need watering. If they're soft, it might be time to water your plant again. Because I have a large south facing window, my experience with jade plants has always been great. I have them on a table right next to that window and they get a lot of hours of direct sunlight every day. Occasionally when growth slows down with these plants, all you need to do is cut it back and that sparks new growth. If you're looking for a plant to experiment with how making different cuts will affect changes in how they grow, the jade plant is a really good choice. Jade plants are inexpensive, you can experiment with trying to propagate them, and they're available almost anywhere. The reason why understanding direct light is so important is because you also need to understand light intensity. In my south facing window, I do get several hours of intense direct light. If I had a north facing window, while I might get some direct sunlight exposure, that light wouldn't be as intense as light from a south facing window. In contrast to the jade plant and direct light, the plant that will teach you about lower light is the snake plant. Because the snake plant comes in so many different styles and colors, this is an excellent plant to have multiple of in your collection. Because this plant is low light tolerant, it makes a really good plant to use as a type of decoration. You can put it on tables, on shelves, pretty much anywhere that needs a little bit of color, 
but might not necessarily get the best lighting. This style of snake plant is a bird's nest snake plant. That means it grows in a spiral shape, but there are lots of other snake plants that grow straight up, so you can definitely take some time to find one that suits your preferred style. In my experience, these plants have always been easy to grow. Sometimes they do get little nicks and scratches on the tops or on the sides of their leaves but they don't often suffer from pests and they're really low maintenance plants. Understanding the difference between thriving and surviving in low light is a really important skill for new plant parents to understand. Sometimes you might not want a plant like this to get any bigger, so you can keep it in lower light. But with given more light, these plants will grow and they will grow fast. Sometimes the more you ignore your plant, the better it does. This is a ZZ plant. This is my ZZ Raven and the availability of ZZ plants have gone way up, which thankfully has brought the price way down. This is another one that gets labeled as a low light plant, but just like our other low light plants, it does better the more light that you give it. I have my plant in medium light. I really like the growth of the ZZ Raven because as a new stalk comes out, it comes out bright green and slowly over time, the plant will start to turn black. I do my best to ignore this plant. I water it less than once a month. I don't fuss over it. I let it be overcrowded. I don't try to trim it or pull off damaged leaves. The more I don't touch this plant, the better it grows. What I do notice about this plant is that when I water it, the water runs through very quickly and the soil dries out very fast. Whatever potting media this came with from the nursery is really, really great. I think that it's a mix of some cactus soil, perlite, and cocoa coir, but if I were to repot this plant, I would want to make sure that I had an extremely well-draining mix. The availability of this plant is much better than what it used to be. You could probably find a ZZ, ZZ Raven, or the smaller ZZ Zenzi for somewhere around $20 at your local nursery. Learn to ignore this plant. You should not be repotting it unless it's completely breaking out of its pot. Once it does, you can unpot it, separate the plant, and start some new pots. I started my plant journey about four years ago, and it all started with this. Well, obviously not this, this is just an empty bowl, but I did buy one of those succulent planters from Home Depot. Didn't have any drainage holes, had rocks covering the top. When I took it home, it was super waterlogged and one of the echeverias actually ended up melting. So I unpotted everything, repotted it, and I've been taking care of those plants ever since. When I was younger, my dad had a lot of indoor and outdoor houseplants, and when I moved out on my own, it was something that I realized I really needed in my space. Although I wouldn't call myself an expert, I have learned a lot of things on my plant journey. If this video has already been helpful, consider giving it a like. Let's go back to more plants. Another important thing that plant parents need to understand is what happens to a vining plant over time. And the plant that will teach you about that is this plant, the Philodendron cordatum, or the similar looking Philodendron heteraceum. Another similar hanging Philodendron is the Philodendron brazil. Now I love hanging plants and I have this one hanging over my television, but one important thing to know is that if you leave a hanging plant to grow, the leaves will continue to get smaller and smaller as the vines get longer. These plants do need something to cling onto if you want their leaves to get bigger, so that's why if you want to have it as a hanging plant, it's always important to trim it back every few months during the spring or summer because that will spark new and larger growth. It's important that you don't let these plants dry out. I water mine every five or six days in the spring and summer, and you'll notice that when it starts to get dry, the leaves will start to curl in. So again, I stick my finger in the first two inches of the soil, and if that's dry, it's time to water it again. I have my plant in medium light, about 10 feet away from a south-facing window. These plants do really well with brighter, indirect light, and the less light it gets, the smaller the leaves will get. So if you want the leaves to stay as large as you can for as long as possible, make sure you're giving it a lot of light and making those cuts in the spring and summer to trim it back. I'm starting to see a lot more hanging philodendrons, especially the philodendron Brazil in big box stores. So you should have no problem finding something that suits your style. Of course, there are more soil types than just potting soil and cactus soil. And the plant that will teach you most about different soil compositions is the Monstera deliciosa. This is a fantastic beginner house plant with an amazing growth pattern. But the soil can be as complicated as you want it to be. This plant thrives in bright light and it has these really cool holes that are called fenestrations that make it one of the most popular house plants today. 
I also have a video that shows you how to get more fenestrations on your Monstera, so if you're interested, check the description down below. With watering your plant, a well-draining soil is key. I water mine about once a week. And if you have a larger Monstera, you'll probably need to water it less frequently than if you have a smaller seedling Monstera. In my experience, this has been an extremely easy houseplant to care for if you have good lighting and great soil. I've made a video on how to make the best Monstera soil, so if you want to check that out, you can go in the description down below too. In North America, these plants are widely available. You can get a small seedling Monstera for around $10 or a larger pot for around $40 to $50. There are also more expensive variegated monsteras if you're looking to become a collector. The Monstera deliciosa is an epiphyte. In the wild, it crawls along the ground until it reaches a tree. It produces aerial roots to hang on and climb up tree branches to reach higher light in the canopies above. The Monstera really needs a chunky, well-draining soil mix. One of the most important things that you can add to your soil is orchid bark. Having a well-draining soil is one of the most important things that you can have on this plant for a better, bigger, and stronger growth. As you become a better plant parent, you'll probably want to start experimenting with plants that climb. One of my favorite plants to have climb is the Monstera adansonii. The Monstera adansonii, or the monkey mass plant, is the perfect plant to have climb because the leaves get so much larger and it has more fenestrations. This plant requires a little bit less light than the Monstera deliciosa, so I try to have these plants in more medium light. As it climbs up a stake or a moss pole, the aerial roots will start to dig in, the plant will become more stable, which will allow the leaves to become much, much larger. Similar to the Monstera deliciosa, I water my plant about once a week and I wait till it's almost completely dry. In my experience with this plant, the care has been a little more tricky than the typical Monstera deliciosa. It doesn't respond that well to changes in lighting or changes in watering. Sometimes the leaves can come out a little bit crispy, sometimes lower leaves can drop off, but eventually when this plant is stable, it grows really well. It's important to remember that this plant is a vine and much smaller than the Monstera deliciosa. So that's why you need to make sure that you have multiple plants inside the same pot so that it has a more fuller, natural look. This plant is the perfect plant to learn about climbing because if you're having it as a hanging plant, you can really start to see the growth pattern differences between the two plants. This plant as a hanging plant, the leaves will become much smaller, start to lose their fenestrations, and the spaces between the leaves will become a lot larger as well. In my opinion, this is a much better looking plant if you give it something to climb. As you acquire more houseplants, the one thing that a lot of plant parents forget to do is to turn their houseplants. And the plant that will get you to remember to do that is this plant, the Pilea peperomoides, also known as the Chinese money plant or the sharing plant. This is a great house plant that's easy to grow and easy to propagate. It likes indirect light and it can grow vastly different depending on how much light you give it. If you give this plant more light, it will grow small and compact, the leaves will become larger and the petioles will be closer and shorter together. If you give this plant less light, the petioles will grow much longer, the leaves will be smaller, and the spacing between the leaves will be a lot bigger. It can be a pretty interesting look if that's what you're going for, making a more stringy looking longer plant, but it's always great to have two of these and compare to see how differently they can grow. I watered this house plant about once a week, but when the soil starts to get dry, you'll see the leaves start to droop down, and that's a really good sign that your plant is ready to be watered again. I really like the leaf pattern on this plant with these gigantic circles, and actually if you look closely on the plant, you can see a pretty interesting turtle shell-like design that I find really fascinating. In my experience, this plant has been extremely easy to care for. It can be susceptible to overwatering, and you might notice that the stem might start to shed some of its brown color, and it might start to lean or bend. If you notice that, I would recommend repotting the plant and putting in fresh soil. And I love how easy this plant is to propagate and share with a friend, hence the name, the sharing plant. The price of this plant is extremely affordable. You can find it almost anywhere, even in some grocery stores, probably between two and $10, depending on the size. The reason why this is the perfect plant to teach you about turning is because the stem is very thin and very tall. If left to its own devices, this stem will continue to bend towards the light 
and eventually it may even lean so far that it could knock your pot over. You really want to make sure that you're turning this plant frequently so that it can keep growing straight for a better looking plant. Collecting house plants can be very rewarding, but you want to ensure that you're doing a good job caring for the plants that you already have. You don't want to have more plants than you can handle and make sure that you have a general base of knowledge before you buy something new. That's why these eight house plants will help teach you the skills that you need to become a master and get your green thumb. If you made it all the way to the end, consider subscribing and give the video a like. I double checked and it is required by law. Comment down below, do you have any of these plants? Which ones are you hoping to get? I'll see you next time.